All right, I got the trailer for Life Mark a few times, and I was like, that looks lame. I'm not gonna go see that. That looks like I'd have nothing to talk about. Just boring. <laughs> so anyway, I went to go see Life Mark last night, and here's my review. Life Mark is directed by Kevin Peoples of Like Arrows, produced by the Kendrick Brothers, and co-stars Kirk Cameron and Alex Kendrick. So yeah, I had to make time to see it. Luckily, it's playing for more than one day. This is a movie about a family whose son David is adopted, and then when he turns 18, his birth mother is able to reach out to him, so they arrange it to where they can all meet and get to know each other. I'll start out with some things this does well. I do like that really it's just about this nice family that all heavily supports each other, so there isn't a lot of forced drama that's just thrown in there. The movie doesn't even really have a villain. When it flashes back, you see the birth father being kind of an ass sometimes, but he is humanized severely. Then in the present, he's a bit nervous about meeting his son, but there is an arc there. Again, like I said, they don't really force any heavy drama just for drama's sake. He has to tell his wife that he had a kid 18 years ago, and she is shocked, but they don't really start arguing or anything. They just remain calm and deal with the situation that's been presented to them. All of that was refreshing, and it's very easy to like these characters. Granted, since there isn't much conflict in it, it's probably gonna be something that I'll forget about after a week or two, because there are some problems with the film. So in the movie, Kirk and his wife lose their sons to a disease, and there's a part where they're standing over their graves and the headstones say 1995, and Kirk goes, they'd be five years old right now, and I was like, what? I've, I've seen some modern phones. This isn't the year 2000. Oh, okay, it's it's a flashback. All right, oh, oh God, they're, they're doing de-aging effects. Oh, wh why are they doing this? It doesn't look as terrifying as you'd think it would. However, it's for the best that it's a different actor playing the pregnant teenager in the flashbacks. As hilarious as it would be to see someone with de-aging playing a pregnant teen. Now here's where the movie really, really, really missteps, and that's the comedy characters. Oh my god, the comic relief in this is so bad that eventually it had turned itself around to where I was honestly looking forward to him showing up just so I could see what stupid ass joke he was gonna say next. The comedy relief comes in the form of the best friend, Nate, who is every neighbor slash best friend from every 80s family sitcom ever made. Right down to where when he sees the mom, he says, What's up, Mrs. C? And then Kirk Cameron will hold up dinner and the kid will be like, Ooh, I love pasta! Even when the teenagers are together as a group, it's written like the Buttercream Gang is a Saturday morning sitcom. It opens with the kids filming themselves jumping off a cliff and into the water. And Nate's like, I'm a vlogger. I really only play to my crowd. And they're like, yeah, crowd of nobody. And then when he films them jumping into the water, he's like, oh, Oh no, I forgot to hit record! Hey guys, can we do it again? And you know he's a vlogger because he says the word hashtag. This kid's plot is that he's filming everything David is going through so he can piece it together for a documentary, which means he is there on hand to ruin every single emotional moment in the film. There's a part where David gets an important text, and Nate's like, Don't read it yet! I need to go to the bathroom! And then he gets up and bolts towards the restroom and trips over shit. I don't know how much I can really get mad at this plot, since at the end it talked about it being a true story, and in real life this kid did film everything like this for a documentary. But in the true story, was there really an emotional scene that was undercut by Nate slowly grabbing a pastry when no one's looking, and is all like, mm hmm oh, mm hmm did he really act like this much of a sitcom, saying things like, Sorry, Mrs. C, I'm trying to get a performance out of this amateur over here. <laughs> 
When his sister took the car from him, did he say to David, Can I get a ride back? And then David says, But dude, you drove us here! Or when he goes, I'm not skydiving. Not me. No way. I am never going skydiving. Cut to him screaming and skydiving. There was one part that I laughed at, though, and it's when the family is all sitting around a fire, and David says, uh, I don't think my birth mom is on social media, really. And Kirk says, yeah, I don't blame her. I'm not a fan of social media either. And that was the most genuine line reading I have ever seen Kirk Cameron give. Anyway, for the most part, the movie wasn't bad. Some of the acting isn't great, but some of it is good, except it can be a little awkward due to the editing, which leaves too many pauses before and after some lines. And I was thinking, you know, this movie isn't really political or preachy. It's just about a kid meeting up with his birth mom. Right on. And then in the last 10 minutes, it gets super political. Out of nowhere, his birth mom tells him, I want you to meet me at this place tomorrow. There's something I need to show you. And then they meet her at this abandoned building, which turns out to be an abandoned abortion clinic. And she says, I almost aborted you. And then it flashes back and is shot like a horror film where she has to make her way past protesters. Then she's lying on the table and at the last minute she changes her mind and gets up and runs out. And the doctor is pissed about this. Like he's ripping off his gloves like, God damn it. This movie took a hard turn in a scene that could easily be cut. But I guess I've still seen worse. The main character isn't a potential mass shooter. No one's comparing it to burgers and fries. Pregnant women aren't in purgatory being forced to continuously give birth. Jamie Kennedy isn't leading everyone in an abortion sing-along. I guess I'll give it a C for could have been worse. It was a Fathom event, so at least there wasn't 30 minutes of trailers beforehand. Plus, I demand Regal take away that annoying movie quote ad and replace it with directors introducing the movie, and then an excited Kirk comes in with a tub of popcorn saying, Hey guys, what are we watching? Okay, subscribe to our channel today and stay tuned tomorrow because we'll have a review up for Clerks 3, and we'll see you next time.